Hey everyone, so welcome to Real Talk. We are here today with Mario Mazzetti, who's a photographer from Los Angeles, who is uh, specializing in seniors, but he also does a little bit of fashion work. So we're super honored for him to join us here today. So first off, um, welcome Mario. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, so um, first off, start off by telling us a little bit kind of about yourself, maybe, maybe your journey, kind of uh, basically how you got into shooting and just kind of give people a little bit of your, your background. Yeah, so I actually used to build and race cars. So I started to photograph cars first and had a uh, friend who asked me to take her senior pictures. And that was the start of my, my portrait sessions basically. And uh, yeah, fell in love with it, loved the process, loved working with people. And so I just hustled, you know, back in like 2008 when the recession happened and the economy was crap. And then uh, I just kept with it. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's like the really short, version of the story but uh yeah started with cars and then moved over to people and built you know crazy studio out of that very cool so so how long have you said you've been shooting since 2008 yeah 2008 was my first full-time year and did you start with seniors or did you just kind of i know you mentioned kind of car photography how did that transition into senior work or was it just kind of happenstance yeah. that you stumbled into it you know what that's actually great i totally forgot about it i did do weddings for a little bit um I think I maybe did like 10 weddings or 15 weddings or something like that. And then realized that I did not like shooting events. So I like switched over to um, doing portraits full time because I, I started shooting seniors and then shot a couple weddings and then went full time with seniors. So yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like, it's crazy how it's kind of, it takes you in different journeys and, and all of a sudden everybody who's like, oh, I want to shoot weddings. And then it's like, oh man, I could never shoot weddings. <laughs> and it's for me personally. So it's kind of a, uh, funny to see somebody else kind of take that journey too. But um, kind of, did, yeah, seriously. Um, so when you did start shooting seniors, kind of what drew you to them or what really is something that you said, you're like, oh man, I want to specialize in seniors or I kind of want to do this a little bit more than some of the other gigs. I think, you know, a, there were a couple different aspects. I mean, one of them, you know, you can, you can make really good money shooting seniors. That was obviously a draw, but a lot of it for me was like, you know, personally, like high school was pretty hard for me. And so I think a lot of it was just like wanting to um, just create like a positive experience uh, was a big thing. You know, I, I remember a lot of kids being really excited for senior pictures um, when I was in school and I couldn't afford them at the time. And so I remember just going through that and, and seeing how everybody was so like excited about getting their pictures taken. It was like this huge process. And, you know, I think, you know, kids are just under such insane pressure these days yeah. that like, it was one of those things where I was like, I actually want to have like a really positive impact on like this part of, you know, their lives. And so it actually just worked out really well that, um, you know, there's a sustainable business behind it. And, uh, you know, I, I love getting to have that, you know, impact on somebody as they're, as they're growing, you know, growing up. Yeah, for sure. And especially with like, I'm sure you've seen this on social media. And I mean, as, as male photographers, we're kind of like, I guess, um, not we're kind of rare occurrences in the senior industry where it seems like it's mainly kind of female dominated which yeah. isn't a bad thing but i think that kind of for us it's um a little bit kind of a further step to kind of relate to the seniors because a lot of the time it's it's high school females that are the ones that are really kind of investing in their portrait experience and so it's kind of interesting to see you kind of say that you wanted to make that positive impact through photography even as as a male photographer who obviously it's high school is, is rough for those senior girls but it's also like rough for, for guys too. So it's kind of cool that you have that perspective on it as well. Yeah, man. I think, I think you and I both have like a really unique perspective as far as being like younger male photographers. Um, and I know like same with your work too. Like I think, you know, it definitely comes through like having that impact. I think it's huge. Yeah, absolutely. So um, also kind of tell us a little bit. So a few years ago you started in Denver, Colorado and then kind of transitioned into the LA Venice Beach area where you are now. So can you kind of walk us through kind of, I guess, why you made the move or just kind of like what your thoughts behind it were kind of just walk us through that kind of what you was going through your mind when you were doing that? Yeah, I mean, that was a, a lot of it. I mean, there were a lot of things going on through my mind at the time. But, you know, I had built this, this brand in Denver um, and had that market saturation really enjoyed that. And I've always had my, eye, you know, my eye on LA, I've always wanted to live, you know, closer to the water and uh, you know Denver winters were starting to get on my last nerves and so it was one of those things where I, I basically packed up without a huge plan um, you know for LA I you know I had enough in savings to, to make the trip and um, 
I knew that if LA wasn't what I wanted, I could always fly back to Denver and shoot, you know, my seniors. I had just marketed and just hustled for so many years that that brand was still really strong. And so I, you know, moving to LA, I started doing more um, agency work and, and more like lifestyle fashion work and then was able to still fly back to Denver, shoot my seniors. And then, you know, on the side, started up my education platform. And so kind of had this like trifecta of going back to Denver for, you know, maintaining my studio, uh, shooting more commercial lifestyle stuff in LA, and then kind of helping other photographers uh, along the way as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I know a lot of photographers, I think kind of moving to LA was, was a choice for you, but other photographers might not, maybe their significant other is, is moving jobs, or um, I know a lot of photographers have just that all of a sudden they need to move for, for various family reasons or whatnot. So kind of what advice would you have for them, for photographers that maybe are going through that transition? Um, kind of what did you, what was like one piece of advice that you could give them when they are making that transition to maybe a new, a new state or a new market? I think, you know, I think the biggest thing was, you know, for me, I had to be okay with like doing some shoots for free again and, you know, setting up a lot of these meetings and understanding, you know, I was in LA and I was like struggling to get an agency to pay me $500 for a shoot. And I'm like, if you guys only knew what I make back in Denver, like this is insane. But I think a lot of it's just uh, going into it with the mindset of when you first started, you know, most photographers, when they start, they do these shoots for free and they're learning their craft and they're making all these connections. And, you know, it's pretty rare for somebody to, you know, jump out of, you know, school or anything and have that $3,000 sale on like one of their first clients. Like, it's just, it's not realistic. And so I think a lot of it's just kind of building up that mentality of it's going to take some time. You're going to have to do some free shoots. You're going to have to do that marketing and meet with people. And it's tough because if you're moving to a town where you don't know anybody, then you also have to like, make new friends and, and all the social stuff. So yeah, I think a lot of it's just to not be scared to kind of push the reset button on your business and, and do what you did the first time around. And I think a lot of people just, they don't exercise the patience with that. And I think they're, you know, they, and they understand that it's going to take a while and they just don't want it to. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, for those of you who might not be familiar with Mario's work, he also does a lot around the educational platform for um, marketing, how to shoot posing, that sort of thing. So kind of give us a little take on why you like the educational side. Cause for me, I love just teaching others, but um, kind of what was maybe the, the catalyst that said, Hey, I, I see this kind of deficiency in the industry. How can I fill this gap? I think the biggest thing for me, I mean, I had been teaching and mentoring photographers, you know, probably for the last like five or six years now and uh, you know, teaching at conferences and showing people how to shoot. And I think a lot of it was just, you know, looking at how can I share this with more people? And so that's where, um, you know, I started doing um, a lot of like social media marketing stuff was kind of the big, um, you know, a lot of people don't want to pay for social media marketing and they don't know how. And so I started working one-on-one -on -one with photographers, kind of figuring out what they're struggling with, what's going on. And then that just exploded into this whole brand of, you know, doing all these posing courses and lighting courses and sales courses. Um, and so now I, you know, I have you know, online deliverables and I do, you know, one-on-ones with photographers. And just a couple of weeks ago, I did a, a small intimate workshop in, in Venice. And so, um, there's something so cool, you know, I, I just got an email back from, um, uh, a woman that I've been mentoring and she says that she doubled her income from last year and she's shooting like less sessions. Yeah. And she was like, I can have done it with that. You're like, Oh, you know, it's just like good, like feel good stuff. And, and so I definitely love the impact. I think, you know, kind of going back to the seniors thing, it's just impact. It's just like knowing that you can like help make somebody's life either a little bit more enjoyable or a little bit more positive. So the education platform definitely like gives that to me. Absolutely. And then kind of going back on the marketing side, you always, you kind of mentioned that, that impact again, how have you kind of implemented that into say your brand message? And do you feel like that was important to, to, to your overall brand is kind of that message of, I want to, to make an impact on your senior year. I want to make this kind of an enjoyable experience despite maybe all of the, the kind of craziness that goes along with, with high school, with high school years. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of it was, I mean, I've been incorporating video into my shoots since like 2009 back before, like, you know, maybe the 5d Mark II had just come out. And so a lot of it was also wanting to record the shoot experience, which, you know, not saying that I'm like this, crazy like transformational photographer but I think a lot of the shoot experience gets missed you know a lot of clients they don't understand what it's like to be on the shoot until they're actually there 
And so, you know, for me, I wanted to translate that. And so I love doing these videos and, and interviews and, and um, you know, I, so much of my work or so many of like my clients, like they're referral based, you know, which is kind of how you want it to be. But I think a lot of it was just kind of building this brand that would just speak for itself. And so where you don't have to market a ton, like if you build all the other like building blocks of the business, you really shouldn't have to like struggle with marketing. Um, and that's been a, a hard conversation to have with photographers, but it's also been a, a really rewarding one as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's something that I see a lot too is where photographers are struggling to market. However, their brand necessarily isn't something that is super solid or, or there's improvement to be had. So kind of how do you approach photographers and kind of tell them, be like, hey, this is something that, or I guess one, one piece of advice that you see photographers doing in their branding that if you could be like, yo, stop, like shake, give them a shake and be like, <laughs> this right here today, what would that piece of advice be? I think a lot of it is just, you know, I would say this with any artist, um, there's a very clear distinction between like the business side and like the art side. Um, and I, I think, you know, this happens a lot with musicians and, and photographers and, and artists. I think they forget that their art is a product. And so I think a lot of people forget and they don't, um, look at it with this kind of like pragmatic sense of like, is my art good enough for what I'm trying to accomplish? And if not, how can I do that? And I think, you know, that extends into like the products that you offer and the type of experience that you're creating, you know, whether you do pre-consults or in-person sales, like all those things. I think a lot of photographers just, they want to assume that their images are good enough and they want to assume that everything else is good enough without like really tearing everything apart and figuring it out. And I think it's tough because, you know, a lot of, photographers aren't inherently good marketers or inherently good salespeople. So they're, they're also learning those skills while working with like a really delicate medium such as, such as art. So it's been interesting trying to like figure out a way to convey that <laughs> and then like actually help people along the way as well. Oh, absolutely. And kind of, that's kind of an interesting distinction to make just because I think that as photographers, we always say, Oh, we're, we're artists, but we don't necessarily always think that we also have a business to run and we do need to make money in order to kind of sustain that, that creative drive that we have. So kind of, when did you realize that or what was the turning point where you said, you're like, Oh man, I need to, this is, this is a business. So I kind of need to approach it as a business um, first and, and, and kind of an artist second in a way. And if I want to make this sustainable as an actual photography business, rather than just kind of a side hustle. I think, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it was, I didn't come from like a photography background, you know, like I, I was a computer nerd growing up. I, um, you know, I didn't have that like lust for photography for 20 years and then finally acted on it. It was one of those things where, you know, I was a business and computer science major in, um, in college. And so, you know, I looked at kind of all of the aspects, you know, I was excited to run the business side. I was excited to um, build the brands and build the marketing and, and all that stuff. And so, and I think a lot of photographers don't have that excitement and so they need to try and find it. And so, I mean, when I started the business, it was very much like, you know, build, you know, the business side first, figure out who my clients are, figure out what type of service that they'll, you know, respond to and all that stuff. So i you know, I didn't start with like my photography side first and then try and find clients. You know, I, I found my clients first and I built a style that, you know, really resonated with them. It's so funny to hear you say that you were a computer nerd in, in high school and college because it's like we see Mar this Mario Mazzetti now and he's like some cool hipster dude from LA and shooting all these cool photos. So it's so funny to see you kind of step back and be like, yo, I was like, I was a little bit of a nerd back in uh, I guess in the high school college, they're just embarrassing, man. They're just like, they're awesome. <laughs> yeah. So we need like an old, like Mario throwback photo or something like that. So I'll, we can, I'll, have to, I'll send you one and, and you can roll it in the video. Yeah, we'll roll it. We'll put it in the, in the, in the video roll. That's so awesome. um, kind of going back, you touched a little bit on kind of, I think something that a lot of photographers struggle with. You said you kind of figured out who your ideal client was. So what were kind of the, some of the steps in, that you kind of said to yourself, okay, I, I, I want to shoot this person. Kind of what were the next steps that you took, whether that was social media marketing, branding, that sort of thing? I mean, I think a lot of it was, um, you know, I did, once I identified the client type, I think from there, everything just kind of fell into place as far as, 
you know, looking at like what kind of music they're listening to and what brands are they attracted to. You know, I personally, I started off with like this crazy off camera flash style, like F8, like that was like how I started, you know, cause it's like, you got to create a technically. Yeah. Perfect. Sunny 16, all that good yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it was like, it was like my clients didn't resonate with that because they're shopping at free people and anthropology and all these other brands, you know, they're, they're not responding to that. And so I think a lot of it was, you know, when I started to adapt my style and change it to something that they wanted, that they could see themselves in. And, you know, when it comes to like social media, like even people in small towns are still following these big brands, like they're still being exposed to it. So, you know, I think a lot of it is like, just because you don't live in LA or Denver or Seattle or what, like whatever, like even if you live in a small town of like 5,000 people, like your clients are still being inundated by this, like, you know, these like media brands. And so um, I think that was kind of my tipping point as far as the like, even if my clients you know, and I, I would even consider Denver a smaller market at this point, like in comparison to like New York City or LA. Um, but they're still being, you know, just hit with all of this brand essentially. So a lot of it just came down to identifying what, you know, they would want and kind of build my style, you know, based around that. Yeah, absolutely. And did you kind of see your style change as you kind of targeted in on your target client or were you kind of just shooting for what you wanted to and then hoping that the people that kind of resonated with that came to you i'm i'm lucky in that i i started by shooting my own style and then i figured out really quickly that if i was going to create a sustainable you know brand that was going to last for years and years i needed to like fix that real quick and so you know for me like I don't have enough of an attraction to the art side to care whether I'm shooting with off-camera flash or natural light, or even if it's like video, if like the senior market turns into like primarily video based, like I would be okay with that because I enjoy, you know, all of these mediums enough. Like if my goal is to create this like sustainable long-term business, like you have to understand that like trends are going to change and things are going to like change, you know, they're going to change over time. And so you know, I was okay with changing my style. And, and I think that is a huge factor into like what propelled my business so fast because I was willing, you know, to adapt to what, you know, my clients wanted. Um, and I think a lot of photographers like need to, need to open up for that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's good to have that unique perspective on it too. Cause I think so often as photographers, we're so tied to our own work that we never really take a second and think, is this what other people want or is am I just shooting for myself or is it also kind of shooting for the business? So I think it's, it's great to have that separate perspective that maybe, maybe people just don't see a lot in the industry. Yep. Yeah. So kind of, um, were there any struggles you went through and kind of what did you do to overcome those? Cause I think as photographers, there's all kind of that, that breaking point where we're like, we suck. We, we just, feel like we aren't doing anything right. So did you ever kind of go through that or, um, and then how did you work to overcome that? I'll, I'll let you know when I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, absolutely, man. Like, you know, there was kind of, you know, I started so young, you know, first of all, I mean, I started when I was, you know, 20 basically. And so, you know, one of the struggles was being a really young male photographer in, you know, working with a lot of female clients. I mean, I had to tread very carefully and be very delicate about that. Um, and it, you know, it worked and it worked out really well to the point where my name had such a strong precedence that like most of my parents don't come to the shoots anymore because they just, they know my name and trust me and all that, you know, and that just takes years of like, you know, building up that trust. But yeah, I mean, my images, you know, I'll have you know, I'll have years that are, I'm not impressed with at all. And I'll have other years where I'm like, that was a good year. Like I shot some really good images. And I think that's just part of like, you know, there, there's this balance of like shooting good work, but also understanding that oftentimes your clients aren't going to notice these like subtle differences um, as well. So I think, you know, photographers can be really hard on themselves. Um, but, at, you know, you kind of get to this point where you're just refining your work more than you are like making these like leaps and bound you know changes basically yeah and i think that that comes just like you said just kind of with the the years of of work as you get to a point where you're creating solid work but it's always kind of the trying to push it to that next level or 
how can yeah. you get it to be to be that that perfect image that we're always shooting for and our clients might be like oh you're amazing and we love all your photos but you're like really because what I shot last week it was not so hot so I think we kind of all go through that so it's kind of interesting to hear you say too and just kind of put it into perspective for everyone that that's it's something that we all go through really it's uh, I mean it's like the same with like musicians you know like you have to write some bad songs to get a good song out there and <clears throat> You know, for the musicians, sometimes those bad songs will get picked up by a TV show or, or some sort of, um, you know, commercial advertising spot, which is totally fine. Like, it'll pay their bills, but they're not maybe crazy proud of it. But, you know, they'll get that one hit that, you know, makes it to the radio and gets them a tour. And, and I, I see photography the same way. Like, I think it's good to keep trying to make better images and to push yourself. But I think you can also go crazy if you do that. And you just need to be okay with, like, if you deliver a less than perfect session, like, it's okay. Like your clients are going to be fine. Like you're going to be fine. Yeah. And I think that's a great piece of advice. Kind of that little gold nugget where he said it's, it's okay to be imperfect. And I think that so often we are so caught up in, in striving for perfection that we almost get lost in, in what we're doing really. It's so true, man. Yeah. And then kind of, um, kind of closing off, what was one of the big things that you learned in photography? If you kind of, maybe it was something that a mentor told you or something that you kind of was that, that aha moment, what was one big piece of advice that you really felt helped your business and kind of is that kind of that North star for you in the years to come? That's a really good question. Um, you know, I, a lot of it was, I didn't have a ton of like mentors when I started. Um, but I think one of the biggest things, at least for me was like looking outside of the industry for like inspiration and, um, because I, I think a lot of it's just, you know, we can become so saturated by like the actual photography industry that like we forget that there's like other businesses or other arts out there. So like I've become obsessed with like, like, like cinematography. Like that's been like really interesting. Like I love watching like movies that just push the like limits on that side. Because I think that opens up my like creative side. And then that translates into, into my clients. And I've seen that happen over and over. Um, so I don't know if that's like an aha moment necessarily, but it's something that like for me, I find that like whenever something's like too tense or like too just like crazy to just like take a step back and like get just a little bit, like just go for a walk basically. And, um, you know, kind of just, just push the reset button. Yeah. And I think that, I think the no, when you were like, Oh, I don't know if that's a good piece of advice or an aha moment. I think it, it completely is. Cause looking outside, you said looking at cinematography, um, looking at fashion brands or, or what other big brands are doing and kind of implementing aspects of that into your photography business, I think is a great thing to do. Because I think that if people look too within the industry too much, I think that it all seems to just be homogenous, kind of all the same, not nothing different. And I think that it's when you start to look outside that you can really kind of make those leaps and bounds to to change the industry, really. It's so true, man. Yeah. Yeah. That, that little breath of fresh air is like so important. Seriously. Well, <laughs> we're going to wrap up. Um, for those of you who don't know, Mario's actually going to be speaking at the Senior Style Guide Push Conference. So it was kind of coincidence that I'm wearing the, the shirt from last year's. But um, what were you speaking on again at the Push Conference, Mario? Uh, I'll be, uh, it's from, uh, the title is from social to booking, I think. And so Very it's cool. about, yeah, kind of wrapping up like not just social media, not just booking, but kind of how the two, you know, work together a lot closer than, than people realize. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think there's still a few seats left. So if you guys want to see Mario, definitely um, a great, fantastic conference to check out hosted by Senior Style Guide for uh, summer of 2018. And then to close this off, we're actually going to let you um, ask a question to the viewers to answer in either the YouTube comments down below or the blog post. So what is one question that you have for our Senior Style Guide Real Talk viewers? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I would like to know what other industries inspire you guys. So I love it. I love it. That's fashion. awesome. I said cinematography, but yeah, I would love to know like what other you know hobbies or, or industries uh, you guys are looking at because that would be that'd be fun to do some research on that. <laughs> yeah, seriously, just kind of see where where other people stand on that. But anyways, thank you again for your time, Mario, and then we'll be signing off. Definitely make sure that you guys check out our next episodes of Real Talk that we have in the coming weeks um, and definitely excited to hear from Mario today. So thank you again for, for coming along. Absolutely. See you guys soon. Awesome. See you guys. Thanks again.